This SGEMS tutorial, I'll be uh, covering sequential Gaussian simulation. So in the course, we saw that sequential Gaussian simulation is a powerful way uh, to uh, simulate Gaussian process condition to observations. One of the reasons it's so powerful is that the sequential nature of the program allows us to mitigate the problem that we often have of, of inverting big covariance matrices, which some of the other methods would require. So we also noted that um, the goal of simulation, as opposed to Krigging, is now to create models that have certain desirable statistics. For example, I'd like my models to have uh, reflect a certain variogram or histogram, as well as the location of our data. As opposed to Krigging, where the idea was simply to get an accurate estimate uh, and a least square estimate uh, of our variable. So that's the goal here. Um, instead of in Krigging, where our variogram um, looks very different from uh, the variogram of our data and truth, um, what we are aiming for is now creating something uh, that has the same variogram as our data as well as a similar histogram. So the input in the SGSIM versus screening, which you've done and seen in the previous YouTube, is therefore not uh, very different. Uh, we'll still be doing search for neighborhoods. Uh, we have to specify variograms. But now uh, there are two main differences that I'd like to point out before we start with examples. First is that you need a histogram, a specified histogram. That was never needed in Krieging. At best, you had to specify the mean, but there was no need for specifying a histogram. So we'll see that in order to do that, um, we'll use this very simple kind of linear interpolation and extrapolation methods uh, that are commonly done in, uh, in SGEMS, but that requires specifying how we extrapolate beyond our largest data. Simply because, of course, we expect our simulation to generate uh, values that are much larger uh, and possibly much smaller than the largest and smallest observation we have. The second important uh, difference is that because it's a standard, uh, because we uh, the, the method the sequential Gaussian simulation requires a standard normal distribution, which we can obtain by this histogram transformation, it also requires that that variogram is the normal score variogram. So in reality, then, you would have to first transform your data into normal score then model your variogram, and so on. Uh, it simply means essentially that your SIL has to be one, and that's uh, something uh, important to note is that, and an important difference with the Krieging uh, code is in the Krieging code, we had to essentially uh, input the actual variogram with the actual variance, and now we just input a variogram that has a SIL equal to one. Okay, so let's cover an example. So here's our worker lake example. So these are our worker lake samples. And so what you notice is uh, we have very few samples. So in this particular application, I'll be uh, considering therefore an analog. Uh, so this is an analog that is deemed to be reflective of the variation that we see, uh, observe in, in, uh, in, in the actual domain. And so what I'll be doing is I'll be using this analog DM, uh, which is say an area that was taken at a different location. And I'll be using that to calculate the variogram and model the variogram. Okay, so that is done here. However, as I mentioned before, the first thing we need to do is we need to take the normal score transform. And so in the SGEMS code, I'll show that in a little bit how that is done. Uh, and that can be done internally into SGEMS. You don't have to export the data and then do the normal score transformation. So here, uh, when we have done that, I calculated variogram in various directions and I modeled the variogram. You notice there's some uh, in azotropy. The major range looks to be around um, 80. Uh, minor range is more around uh, 40, and so uh, that is what we then uh, come up with. And the type is exponential and a certain negative. So now I have my variogram, and now I can go into SGEMS to input all this information. Okay, so here we are in SGEMS, and this is the same uh, worker lake analog I showed before, and here's your sample data. As I showed before, you see that analog is a little bit larger uh, than the Walker Lake data set. As I mentioned before, the first thing uh, that we would have to do if you model the variogram, uh, again, which is not going to do, but I'll show you just um, how to get this, basically this normal score uh, transformation. So what we do is we go to utilities, and then in utilities, uh, we use CDF transformation continuous variables. So if you click on that, then um, this uh, window pops up. And uh, there is a uh, the data you'll be transforming the source you'll the the, the 
the, 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 the histogram to be transformed, and the target is the histogram, target histogram in which we would like to transform. And so in, in here, we, uh, we can use the standard Gaussian distribution, which you can select in SGEMS, or you could say, I'd like to do a uniform score transform, um, et cetera. So this would be the Gaussian distribution, and that's what we'd like. So we'd like to transform, of course, our Walker Lake DM. So you could do that by choose properties and then select the properties. So the, what I had done here is I selected this property, moved it into that window and click OK. So that's a property we transform. We can call that normal score. So that's our histogram. So now we have to specify, as I mentioned before, you have to specify the extrapolation issue. So in SGEMS, um, this is done here below. So um, what we have here is the lower tail extrapolation. So that means I have to guess, first of all, what is my lowest possible value? So we can go into our histogram for the um, analog. And so uh, here we see that the uh, lowest possible is zero and the highest possible is around 10,000. So this omega here is the is this kind of extrapolation that you're making. Um, so I think if omega is one, you make it linear. If omega is three, you make it decline faster. If it's less than one, you make it decline uh, slower. So these are set in SGEMS like this, and I feel these are good values in general, particularly when you have uh, skew distributions like the one I shown before. So here I take a maximum eleven thousand. This it's not really that important, um, of course. Um, it it it's somewhat important if you're really interested in these high peak values. Uh, but if you're just looking at the spatial pattern, you just need to make sure that you take something that's above the highest data value. Otherwise, as James will complain about that. So you're all set. So if I run that, then I get this DM uh, normal score. I just click run here. I'll get this DM normal score, which is now different from, uh, let's see here, the DM normal score. This is normal score transfer. You'll notice now that everything is sort of flattened out a little bit. Uh, we don't have this red blue uh, thing. We have more uh, sort of a rainbow of colors. Okay, so once I've done that, I modeled my variogram. Remember, I had my variogram that I had modeled uh, before in the slides. So now I go to simulation and I select SGSIM. Okay, and if you do that, you'll see a, a Windows popping up that is very similar to Krigging. You have to have some data, you have to have some variogram, and there'll be search neighborhoods. As I mentioned, the only difference is in your data is that you have to use a target histogram. Right? So the target histogram is the histogram, say, of my either sample data, or it could be the histogram um, of, of, of whatever you, you'd like to have. You can also use here the DM if you uh, use the DM of the analog, if that's the histogram you'd like to have. So uh, again, here I have the maximum. I see that it's 10,000 here. Uh, so that is my histogram. And so that's the part that you won't see in the Krigging. The second part that's different from uh, the Krigging is that now we have, um, as you notice here, we have a, a normal score variogram. So we have a nugget of 0 0.05 and a contribution of 0 0.95. So if I take the sum of this, uh, then I have essentially one. Otherwise, this is the same as we discussed for Krigging. The other slight difference is that you don't have to worry too much about the search neighborhood. Because it's a simulation and because you use a random path, you're unlikely to run into uh, artifacts that we have in Krigging. And Krigging, remember, if you use too small of a search neighborhood or have not enough points in it, you get these kind of discontinuities. And so here, because we're doing simulation, we use a random path, um, that's not going to be affect us uh, as much. So this is not as critical as before. Okay, so we can uh, do that and, and we can uh, generate, say, not, uh, uh, let's say we generate instead of one realization, let's say we generate 50 realizations. Okay, so there we go. And we're working on several uh, realizations as you notice. Okay, so here we are. Um, now you notice that in our Walker Lake True Grid, uh, we have a number of uh, realizations, namely 50. So for example, here you have realizations, you see that kind of reflects our data we have, we have another realization, looks different, and so on. 
Okay, so the first thing you would now have to do is uh, some data analysis. For example, you'd like to see whether or not your realization um, has a histogram that's similar to your uh, your sample histogram. Uh, and so let's cut off this maximum here a little bit. And that seems to be pretty much the case, right? A maximum is always um, it's kind of hit of a miss. Next time it could be low, so we get. Um, Oh, this is hopefully true. That's not what I yes, that's not what I like. I like to have that. Uh, so there we go. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, so next thing is to also look at Veragram. Uh, make sure these are kind of quality checks. So it's very important to do those. Make sure nothing went wrong. If it doesn't match, then something in your probably your input was not quite right. Okay. The next uh, point we can do is, is calculate sort of, well, it's hard to look at all these realizations, right? So we can browse through it, but uh, we'd like to have some summaries of it as well. And so then uh, to do that, we go to our uh, utilities tab here. It's called PostSim. Um, and in PostSim, then um, this pops up. So I've already done that for you. So we select our work like true. Then like before, what I had was um, I had all these simulations. They were on this side. So I say I would like to sum, calculate summary statistics of these realizations. So I select those and I move them to that side. So these are now the ones I will calculate my statistics on. So I calculate, I click OK. And so one of the things I'd like to do is we, we call like the mean. Uh, here in SGM it's called E-type, but E means expectation. Uh, I'd like to calculate the variance. So this is just going to cal essentially calculate an ensemble average of all the realizations. Conditional variance will uh, do the same, but now calculate a, a variance. Conditional variance means that it's it's conditioned to these observations that I have. And then any other kind of statistics. For example, I'd like to know what's the probability of being above a certain threshold. Uh, so what's the probability of being, uh, say, above 1,000 feet? And that will then give me a map of probabilities. So if I run that, I click Run here, um, then I get these various things. For example, here's the mean. So this is now something that looks smooth, so that looks much like your rigging, basically. So you, actually, if you would do many, many realizations and average them, it looks really much, very much like your rigging. Um, your conditional variance. Uh, so we notice, of course, the highest variance is in the mountains. These are harder to estimate. Lowest variances are in the valleys. They're easier to estimate. And then the probability of being above a threshold, which shows that this area is has high, high probability, and it could show you that probability actually if I look at work on it through if I look at probability uh, no I should go to general uh, show color bar off Walker Lake through and then I select probability and you see this is the probability so this is high probability 0 0.7 uh, these are low probabilities so we're very certain to be in the mountain here very certain to be in the valley over there. 